why is dating and like dating women and feeling desired by women always like seem like it's the biggest problem for Asian guys? Yeah, I mean, it's probably the most primal natural thing for us to reproduce and want to reproduce. And uh, if we don't feel like the like the mate is having that same desire for us, then it feels very bad. Yeah. For sure. For Here's a list of things that your Chinese parents might have never taught you. So how many of them do you know? Yeah, we got to talk about it because I came across two viral articles on the internet from people who basically were talking about I had unsatisfactory results. I'm not trying to blame my parents, but here's the things I wish they would have taught me or made me aware of that they did not. Joining us for this discussion today is a model activist entrepreneur, homie Jack Liang. Yo, what up, David? Good to see you guys. Love to be here. Love sharing my insight. Let's keep it real. Man, I appreciate you always uh, letting your shorter friend get a crack at the man, I gotta look out for the for the bros. Yeah, um, Andrew. First off, let's analyze the first post. It's basically a guy who was saying, you know, I'm telling you, growing up, it sucked being an ABC guy because I was growing up in an all white classroom. People would like, you know, thought I was different. Being an Asian Christian wasn't very fun either because it made you think that you should belong in America, but then you don't. Then your parents tell you to not go into sports. If they do tell you to go into sports, you're like playing badminton or tennis. They don't tell you to go into the arts if you do go into the arts you're going into orchestra <laughs> and overall it just made me like feel not cool my dating uh, life was like super far behind my career even though i got good grades so and i wish my asian parents or chinese parents would have just taught me differently yeah so i think basically uh this is a common sentiment that i i know that happens a lot especially on the internet especially from guys who even went to a good college and got a good job but uh, they never felt like that they were coached properly to handle the dynamics of America because they're at home getting taught one way of life, one philosophy, and then they're going out in the world and realizing like, ooh, that mm. doesn't actually play in this world, right? And that's not actually how you live a good life in America. So I'm sure that essentially these guys are unhappy, but also I think a lot of these guys have high expectations, not to their fault, but they oftentimes do. Right, I mean, I guess you get high grades uh, you get high academic accolades. You expect the other aspects of your life to operate or, uh, or function or execute at a high level too. Yeah. Jack, why do you think so many of these guys writing these posts, and I got another one after this, are maybe like around 30? I think uh, they put in a lot of work and they were told to work hard in school, um, put the work in, study. And then once they're about 30 years old, they realize that this is not true. Like all the happiness and joy and fulfillment and love that they wanted it's not actually coming to fruition. So are you kind of saying like when you're maybe like 18, 20, you're just so focused on working that you're just like, it's all good. It's supposed to be this way. It's supposed to be miserable. I'm supposed to not have any friends. I'm supposed to not get love from girls. And the struggle, then, the and struggle, then, the hustle. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. You're putting your head down and grinding and then you're supposed to reap all these rewards. But then at the time that everyone else is supposed to be reaping the rewards, you're like, wait, where's mine? Yeah. yeah. And by the way, we're not saying that every Chinese American guy that's like 30 to 40 years old feels this way, but it might be a larger amount than you think oh. just based off the post, right? Oh, and I'm not saying do. all Chinese guys are unhappy, but I think a lot of Asian guys in general, not just Chinese, can empathize with this sentiment on some level. Yeah. I think Chinese the most though. I mean, I'll get into that later. Yeah, I really yeah. think that like every Asian group has a different distribution of this feeling, even though that this feeling sense. is possible, of course. Anyway, all anyways, anyways what, what's the second article? Because this one's from an interesting perspective. Yeah, that, so the first article was from a guy who was at ABC. He's just like uh -huh. us, like born in America, right? This other one was from a uh, Chinese guy who was born in China, came from Shanxi at seven years old, which is Northern China. And then basically he went to an Ivy League institution, got into a lucrative career, but still wrote this warning post to all Chinese parents that were thinking about bringing their kids to America saying, wow. hey, man, you can do it, but uh, I think there are maybe a couple things that you're yeah, not yeah, considering. Yeah. Mm. And uh, he listed them out. He said, <laughs> listen, there are going to be permanent cultural barriers. Your son will have a lifelong treatment as being a second-class citizen, and it's going to be very difficult, if not possible, impossible to enter super lucrative business circles due to their race and not fitting in. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, I think uh, I see a lot of suffering in the in the Chinese community specifically. Yeah. yeah. And it's not the, a conventional type of suffering, right? It's suffering from disappointment of expectation. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I want to point out that when people say like, oh, I feel like a second class citizen, I think it's important to like kind of specify what you mean, because I think that sounds like really right. horrible to some people. Right, but right, I'm right. like, really, what does it mean? You kind of feel like a perpetual foreigner. Yeah. And that's why you can't get in certain business circles. It's hard to network because culturally you're different. Just like going to golf with your boss, yeah. that your white right. boss on, the, on the Sunday. I, I think whatever. honestly, intellectually, it might be easier if people did have the decimal system to categorize as a 1.5 or 1.75 citizen mm -hmm. because second class citizen might seem, you know, from, from you people's gotta put context. In, you got to put in more work. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. he said, yeah, for example, Chinese men in particular are extra hated, whereas Chinese women are more popular. Though even amongst the Chinese women that date whites, only a portion of them will be fully respected to get, reap the awards of the dominant class. But for men, it is almost impossible entirely off the jump. So let me get this straight. He is writing this this essay. He wrote in this in Chinese. Chinese. He wrote He's wrote it in it, writing it in Chinese for the Chinese internet for Chinese parents who are thinking about moving to America and he's just forewarning them of some of the things they might run into. So he's yeah. like saying, hey, even if your daughter or son can date into the dominant world, which is usually white, right, in America, that, that doesn't even guarantee them respect anyway. Right, it doesn't guarantee them, I guess, get into the circles where like everything, life flows like more quickly or more Yeah, easily. they're just not as easily accepted. Yeah. Um, he also said that I th a lot of Chinese parents, when they're in China deciding to move their kid over, they take a look at the corruption and the pollution levels and how ultra competitive China is. And they look at America as like a perfect land. And he said, while those things are all true, that yeah. uh, uh, America has a lot of nice things, simply Chinese have a lot of struggle fitting in. Right. So he's saying, even though it's true that America has way less pollution and way less corruption on a governmental level, that doesn't necessarily mean all the great things in America, your kid will have access to right. that. Right, so just as much that America is the land of opportunity and it is the beautiful country, Meiguo, right? Like that's what we call it in right. Chinese. Meiguo. So as beautiful as it is, it doesn't mean that your child automatically is gonna have access to all of it. Now, it's true, America is the land of opportunity where they probably have a better shot technically right, right because at least that i guess that environment theoretically exists right 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 it exists but yeah it does not mean that even if they work very hard that they will have access of course so he basically said of the four major races in america based off their behaviors asian men will still have the most difficult social journey regardless i agree with that i mean we see data from the dating apps that show that and uh, i think a lot of it has to do with girls yeah, I think that that's what he was referring to a lot because obviously this guy achieved entrance into an Ivy League university, into a lucrative career, but he's still, with all that being said, he had technically achieved the dream. This he's still it. cautioning yeah. the parents, like, hey, think about it. I don't know if it was worth it. I, I want to talk about this because I think a lot of people tend to say, okay, guys, when it comes to Asian guys and dating, just calm down. It's not that bad. Like, why is dating and, like, dating women and feeling desired by women always, like, seem like it's the biggest problem for Asian guys. Like, can we quickly address this? Why maybe feeling desired by women is very important, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's probably the most primal, natural thing for us to reproduce and want to reproduce. And uh, if we don't feel like the, the opposite, like the mate is having that same desire for us, then it feels very bad. Yeah. For sure, for sure. And I would also add on to this. I do think for Asian men in America, when they hear or feel like that even... So a portion of Asian women don't like them. And yeah, then yeah. non-Asian men can use that as fuel to also disrespect yeah. Asian men because they're right. like, oh, well, your own women don't even like you, you know? And yeah. that can hurt. That, no, that's these another, are all that's super harsh punch. conversations, yeah, yeah, guys, yeah. that a lot of people do not like having. They don't like having it, but it's real. It's reality. So I guess how much do we agree with these two posts? One was from an ABC. One was from a FOB guy. Like I said, I'm not saying everybody feels this way, but I think a larger portion than people would let on feel this way. I would agree, I would essentially agree with it with the caveat of like not everybody's situation is fully the same. It depends on how uh -huh. you look, how tall you are, how much you fit in. Did you have a good white friend or a black friend that made or a Latino friend that made yeah. you feel more a part of a niche community? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but yeah, essentially, yeah. I can see where they're going with it. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're a sociable, funny, interesting dude that maybe isn't even that tall or good looking, you have a good shot here. Right, yeah. But it is true that if you have if you check none of the boxes, I'm not going to lie, it is going to be tough, it especially really as a tough. foreigner. Yeah, I think you need some riz, as they say, right? right, right. <laughs> you, you can try to riz your way out of this, but some situations, you do, whatever but, you're born into or how you look, yeah, there, is no there is no riz. riz. But then, be, be how do you eat. get the riz? Oof. Let's say riz is the solution. How do you get it from yeah, your parents? And Ooh. if your parents don't teach you, right, this leads to... The next part and of this I, and I video. And I also think that, that both these posts from the ABC and the FOB guy, they're sort of like assuming that people want to enter high white society. Because, mm -hmm. you know, me and you, uh, especially you, we grew up in more like minority or like uh, people of color neighborhoods. Right, you know right. what I mean? Like urban neighborhoods. It really was different fully because instead of trying to be white, it's almost like kids want to be be more black, right? Be more black or Hispanic. Yeah, yeah to yeah. be honest. So that that's a whole nother thing that I don't think either of these posts are considered. Yeah. Has it changed in six years too? Like, the way the guy was saying it six years ago, I could see it being more true than it is now. It has changed. I think there's more Asians in media. It's getting a little bit better. 
I think it also depends on where you move. Let's be honest, man. I mean, yeah, if you are able, if your parents are able to make it in New York and like live in New York, then technically you have all the opportunities in like New York, LA, these big market cities. Right. But if you move and your parents move to like second tier, third tier city in Texas, or, which or I don't Ohio know, or something like that, yeah, right? Yeah, like <laughs> Midwest. Not that there's anything yeah. wrong with that, but it is a tougher environment for you to feel accepted. I maybe. think one of the, the, the big macro truths is America is becoming so diverse now. It's like you said, it matters what state you move to, what city you move to, and then what neighborhood within that city right. you move the to. A lot important. of things are really conditional and your mileage may vary. Let's get into the comments section. Somebody said, in terms of lacking job promotions, especially in the leadership sector, a lot of Asians are not doing the network or showing their leadership charisma, probably because their parents never taught them. And that kind of gets back to the, the core of this video. Do you think that's true or is it more of the macro racism? No, it's true. I mean, uh, the parents definitely have a, a big responsibility to teach their kids how to be social, how to be liked, how to have uh, vulnerable conversations. But those are not Chinese things to know. They're not Chinese things. <laughs> so so how, how, if the parents don't know, and let's just say, like, I don't know, like, if our parents, like, I wouldn't say, like, my parents are, you know, they speak English, so obviously they're somewhat socialized, but they're not, like, the most charismatic leaders and most, like, you know, organized people either. So yeah. I guess, like, they're kind of limited in what they can teach you, right? Right, right, absolutely. I mean, uh, the, the thing is we can't blame our parents. It's, it's very easy to blame them, but if we look at their situation, it's like they weren't given that many cards or, or blessings yeah. too, right? Like, so it's our, our responsibility to go seek out teachers and masters and courses and books to be like, okay, what are they doing that I'm doing wrong? Yeah, that's true. You got to fill in the blind spots. Right. And like you said, I think a lot of Chinese culture specifically, like I said, we could make overarching statements about Asian culture, but today's video is more specifically about Chinese. Other Asians may or may not relate. I think a lot of Chinese culture, if you look through the dynasticism and all the tumultuous revolutions and histories, right. it's almost like more focused on preventing downward mobility it than is. it is coaching the kids to have upward mobility. And if you want to move upwards in your company to enter that like C-suite or the partner level, you do need the leadership and the charisma, essentially things that you would might receive zero training on it in the home environment. Dude, I'll tell you this, man. True charisma that you can use that's calibrated for, like, leadership positions. In a Western It sense, takes right? a lot of time, and, and you got to get a lot of reps. And so what I would recommend is maybe a, a small solution is, like, having your kid or you, if you're a kid right now, joining certain groups where it gives you a uh, uh, repetition gives you a chance to be a leader. It doesn't have to be the track team. It doesn't have to be the basketball team, right. although those are great ways to do it. But it could be just like your little group squad or, right. or the club at school or and, something like that. And let's be honest, there's a lot more opportunities now in 2023 to replicate some sort of like good training system than 10 right, years right. ago. And the 10 years ago was better than 20, was better than 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, so I like your point though, Jack, about saying not blaming the parents. Definitely. Uh, you know, I, I blame my parents a lot. You know, they don't speak English. They didn't really pay for my college. And then... As I, as I got older, I was like, huh, these, these people, they did the best they can. They're still working. They're yeah. teaching me what they think is best for me, but obviously what they think is best for me is not actually best for me. Right. That's a good yeah. point. Uh, and that's okay to acknowledge that. Yeah, and it's like, you know, as long as the heart is there, you know, but it's just right. like, don't, I, I just don't like it when people either like, they either resent their parents or they overly listen to their parents. And like you said, your parents' advice, as well intentioned as it is, it could be outmoded or just completely not right for the circumstances. Right. So, they don't understand. Um, yeah. Somebody said the USA, the one thing a lot of Asian parents don't understand is the USA is actually a great country for having low education or low technical skills. It's not like Asia where pretty much like you need the degree in broadcasting to become a broadcaster. America's always had some sense of like being entrepreneurial and like finding a new path to achieving something. I, I agree with that. I see a lot of people who aren't really highly educated, but they still make a decent living. Yeah. yeah. And or even I a think good living depending on their risk tolerance, right? Yeah. And I'm going to be honest, I think the people who wrote these articles, they come from families that might have even came with college degrees from China and they're doing something brainy like in mm. STEM. These kids super brainy. They, now here's the thing, they sometimes feel the worst because they know their parents are technically educated, mm. but they can't teach them the ways to be successful in America, which as we know, in America, you do not have to be formally educated and you don't have to be brainy in order to be successful. I think sometimes the merchant entrepreneur kids have a better time in America than people, to be honest, Andrew, from our background where the parents or one parent is like hyper-educated, sticking to the Confucian dynastic uh, <laughs> national exam, yes, you know, eunuch, scholastic system. Yeah, that, yeah. America don't work like that. No. America's almost the furthest country from that, I, even I, though there's some... Uh, 
lanes in America that may mimic it. The, the Chinese than kids that I know that are still like Fabi or, or foreign or like, you know, immigrants to this country that end up adapting well, probably have parents who did some type of business because guess what? Doing business and trade is not that different in China than it is in America. It's right. the same principle. It's still an ap adaptation to the, the circumstances yeah. that are out of your control. But, but to be honest, the academic parents, they'd be on some other stuff. Right. When you that. feel like your parents went to college and you're like, well, my parents have a college degree. Why can't they teach yeah. me more? It's like, some, yeah, sometimes there's too much entitlement with that. Mm -hmm. um, somebody said it really depends on what zone you grew up with in, in America because there are different types of Europeans that settled each zone. For example, Seattle has a Seattle freeze because it was settled by Scandinavians from Sweden, Finland, and Norway, and Scandinavian culture is not very open. So even how you move it depends on what type of white people you're even growing up around in America. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah, or, or like we were saying, any type of person. Right. Do you think growing up in a more urban environment, you grew up in Brooklyn? In the inner city. It, it yeah. made you, in, in, the, in the inner city Brooklyn, not like Park Slope 2023 Brooklyn. I was close uh, to Park Slope. But yeah, 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 but, but yeah, it was yeah. the whole Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think that made you, put you in a sink or swim type situation? Absolutely. I was always just around these people who are always fighting or running or just together. And I just, I was always in a group or, or dynamic, right? So I'm watching who's the alpha, who has the most charisma, who is the leader. And at least I get to pay attention to what they're doing. Mm. Right. So there was a lot of observing on your part and seeing those reps in real life through your social systems, right? And but, now whether or not like they were uh, professional leaders, but right. they were leaders of the group. But right. is there kids that you saw from Chinese immigrant families that grew up in the hood that didn't have it strengthen them? Yeah. It broke them, right? It destroyed, it really breaks them. So it is, it could be quite damaging. So it could be a sink or swim. And, and there's a yeah. distribution of who ends up sinking and who ends up swimming, right? Yeah, at the end of the day, I think people are, are ultimately nice, but like it, it is challenging. For sure. Somebody said, uh, Andrew, uh, that these guys, these two articles, because people were discussing the articles, are blaming too much on racism. I truly believe that, this is the comment, I truly believe hardcore racism only makes up 10 to 30% of people's downfall depending on the environment and situation. But internet people would love to blame 100% of their problems on racism while ignoring the other 70% of reasons that are actually their own fault or just not due to racism. Interesting. This, is, this was an interesting comment. It I, Jack, interesting. Andrew, what do you guys think? I mean, he's basically saying, yeah, these guys kind of make a point, but they're over blaming it. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think he's right. But as a person who is a high achiever, I will never let a statistic keep me down. I'm like, I know these odds are against me, but I'm going to work towards fucking I, breaking the ceiling. I think that if I had to choose, right, and, and someone's asking me like, hey, Andrew, how should I operate? Should I operate like race is not an issue or should I operate as if race is the biggest issue? I would tell them to operate as if race is not the issue. Right, strictly from a functional, yeah, like, from trick, just right? moving forward and being successful, try to operate as if it is not. Although deep down, I think we know that it, it, it can be a significant impact. However, you don't want that to hold you back because it, there's nothing you can do about it. Is this sort of like Isaiah Robinson, I don't know, Nate Robinson and Isaiah Thomas never thinking that their height was an issue, even though, of course, their height, it is an issue in basketball. Right. Well, I don't think it helps you to keep thinking about it. Like, once you know, you're just like, okay, you know what? It sucks. Boom. Let's just move forward, yeah. and I just won't, like, dwell on it. Yeah. Right. I actually agree that to some extent, the hardcore racism just with no other factors taken into consideration, no self-agency or none of your own stats, it is like probably closer to 30% than 60% for sure. Mm -hmm. I do agree with that. But the one caveat I'll say is that if I was to understand life in a more nuanced way, there's a lot of like butterfly effects or like domino or cascading impacts. It's a little bit like in basketball where let's say, for example, the main play is to like throw a rim lob, but you, you have a point guard who can only go right because he has to throw it with his right hand, but then the defense takes away his right now he's theoretically he can th still throw the rim lob with his left, but you've just taken away everything that guard wants to do. Yeah. So I think that that's like the cascading impact of it that I think is more complicated to explain than, oh, it was 10% fault. It was 30% fault, 60% right. fault. Um, let's just get into the main things that Asian parents can get their kids into that old school Asian parents like we had typically did not encourage that. Much. So you're saying these are the things that could actually help. That like, let's say your parents are not as educated or they can't coach you in a lot or of they're things. They're just from the old school. You know, yeah. I think a lot of newer school parents, like let's say, for example, if we all became parents right now. We're probably going to do these things, right? Right, Because right, we've seen them. But we're talking about things that we grew up around. We, and maybe mm. still to this day, some people, kids are not getting this. Sports. Absolutely. I mean, I was in a basketball team since I was 11. Um, eventually, I became the captain. But in the beginning, I barely got picked. 
And uh, I just kind of and seen it was a non-Asian team, right? Non-Asian team. Uh, high and what school. I love about sports, it is a meritocracy for the most part. There's a little bit of politics, but really it's a meritocracy. If you show up and you can do the work and you hustle and you add to the team, they're going to value you eventually. And right. that can also just get, teach you a lot about life in general. Even Absolutely. though maybe business is not fully a meritocracy, it's a lot of connections. But regardless, that's a good lesson. Yeah, I think a lot of Asian parents are not considering the ancillary benefits because they're like, oh, my kid is not that good at basketball. Right, they're not right. gonna play D1 college basketball, and pay for school. Why would I put my kid in that system? But it's, you're, you're learning all the uh, work, outside life. Yeah, you're learning like, how to work with people you don't like to work with, how to kind of uh, achieve as a team instead of just for yourself. I right. think that applies to your career. Yeah, I think you just got to look at, like, Giannis instead of... You know how, like, Asian parents enter the probably think of, like, wow, my kid is going to be like Ja Moran with a gun in the club. I think they're but more it's like, like people a, are like Giannis. Yeah. Like a Draymond Green as, like, what we can achieve, yeah. for, you know? Hey, man, it's all about the team. And like you said, yeah. you can learn a lot from basketball, but if you play basketball very mindlessly, you actually don't learn anything. Right. Uh, emotional intelligence. Yeah, you know, I've never seen my parents have a, a high-quality emotional conversation. It's either yelling or just, like, laughter. And it was my responsib responsibility to go and figure that out. Um, Andrew, what do you think about the combos we have? Maybe we add a little bit because uh, our parents speak English. You know, I think I saw this, but I definitely saw from cousins we had be like, you know how, like, you, you hear from your cousins where they're just like, yeah, I just, like, don't talk to my dad. Yeah, yeah, I think that's too bad. And I think that hopefully the all the whole conversation about – um, you know, having conversations and emotional intelligence is growing amongst the younger generation. So I, th I think people are able to maybe force these combos a little bit better now. Like there used to be at a time, like you didn't even want to talk to your parents. If you're just like, man, my parents, they're just nagging me. I don't even want to talk. I don't even want to get to know them. And then yeah. you never end up having a good combo you, with them. You never see them having a healthy conversation with each other. So yeah. you don't know what it looks like. Yeah. That's By true. the way, I do think this is variable. Even if you're Chinese, if your right. parents are like 50, 60, 70 or 80, Every decade, the parents become more open and less mm. with the old ways, right? Yeah. Uh, leadership. Ooh. How do you get leadership training? Because this is probably one of the number one things that I see impact yappies or people who are unhappy in their professional life in their 30s or their 40s because they're like, man, I'm doing good at work. I'm getting good performance reviews, but I'm not giving leadership responsibilities. Of course, all the big payouts, all the performance payouts, big bonuses, it's all generally leaders. Yeah, I think um, starting bringing this, the kids into clubs and social environments or groups um, just letting them be in systems where they can challenge each other and grow. How did you learn? Because I know you took some leadership roles at Instagram yeah. when you were working there at Facebook. Like what, what, yeah, how I mean, did you it, learn it? In college, there was a, there was a club and I was, you know, I started off as the, I guess the, the, the first position and then the I lowest ranked, the lowest right? rank and then I became like the, the vice president of the, of the club and I ran it like a real organization that held people accountable and it just put me in that position to experience what that felt like. Right. I think sometimes, to an extent, you have to get shoved into it. At a young age, you just have to get shoved into these roles, and you have to kind of sink or swim as a leader. You know, even on a micro, like, sixth grade, seventh grade, ninth grade level, like, just, you got to be pushed into it somehow. Uh, masculinity. Oh, to, man. Uh, what a toxic word in 2023. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but, but I toxic. mean, it is important, right? And I'm not, just not... Probably especially for guys, right? I guess because there's an yeah. expectation that you'll, you're you going to be masculine and if you want to... Yeah. I mean, I mean, let's also speak on Asian guys like, you know, not known to be the tallest people or, or uh, always like seen yeah. as the strongest people. So, of course, our masculinity is always at stake. So and we I have think, to figure yeah. this out. And I think not only that too, and this, this is like, I don't want to over blame society or anything, but when society never looks at you to be masculine, you might never feel like the need to live up to that. Because nobody's going to ask you, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's where I think this is where the family comes into play or you seeking those opportunities to even be feel masculine or like a leader in small circles at first. And you got to get those early wins early on so that it encourages you to try more and to level up. Yeah. I mean, uh, Jack, you were talking about Boy Scouts, right? A passage, different types of uh, micro systems you can enter when you're young, right? Yeah. I mean, I think in other cultures, they have these systems where if you're like 15 16 they have a ceremony where you become a man and it's like your dad talks to you and your and your grandpa talks to you and your uncles talks to you and hey here are your responsibilities here's what you have to do here's why and then you kind of transition into responsibility maybe like maybe like running the tribe or like becoming the leader of your family and here's your here's what you have to do and here's like how to do it 
Mm, mm, so you're yeah. saying maybe, and it doesn't have to be this big party like some cultures have, but like there should be some type of like official right. sit down meeting at least when you're like, hey, okay, son, you are right. 18 years old now. Like we expect this and this and this. I believe this. in it. I believe yeah, in yeah. it. I think that's cool. You know, like, I didn't yeah. have any growing up, but um, that'd be dope to do. Yeah, 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 like the extreme side of things is obviously the 300, but the more realistic something we see all, a lot is the bar mitzvahs, right? Mm. Hunt a wolf. Yeah, hunt a wolf, stay in the jungle for two days. Like. Um, you also <laughs> said that, that Asian parents need to diversify and let their kids pursue different interests, hang out with different friends. I think a lot of Chinese parents in particular, all Asian parents, but maybe especially Chinese parents, they'd be like kind of very, like we said, they're trying to avoid downward mobility more than they're thinking about uh, getting their kid so diverse they can become more of a leader yeah i think like what you said before is like the the boy scouts like some sort of club that you know they can be in where they can at least express physically how they're like how they feel and uh, how to dominate how to let someone else take over these are all things that right. we should be learning and obviously boy scouts they got some bad press in the past couple decades yeah. maybe they're you you investigate locally there's going to be some organizations that mimic the same thing right right um and last but not least Andrew, how do Asian parents know what aspects of life they can realistically guide them through? Because uh, we were talking about how a lot of Chinese parents, even like maybe the poorest ones, they're working two jobs, manual labor. They could still check their kids' grades, theoretically, right? Unless the kid does the Photoshop job, right? And like yeah. changes all the grades around or whatever. But then I notice a lot of higher income Chinese parents or Taiwanese parents they like try to control every aspect of the yeah, life from, I, the, from who they're hanging out with to how they're speaking. To what I think watching. it's really important for parents and it's hard to speak to this group of parents. Cause like, I, I don't think that like a 50 year old, like immigrant, like is necessarily watching this video, but like, I would say it's really important just for people in general to know what they don't know. So maybe you're a parent, or your parent couldn't provide something, but hopefully they could have found somebody else or known that at least if they put you in this system, you would learn something else that they don't know. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like oftentimes some of they go to church, right? For at least if not for the spirituality, it's for the community reason. Because at church, you're gonna have people of a, with all different types of jobs. Blue collar, they're gonna be everything to white collar jobs. They're gonna be engineers. They'll be doctors. Right. They'll be church leaders. They'll be right. all these different things so that you are exposed to all of them. And that's what a community is for. Yeah, shout yeah. out to church, to be honest. I mean, yeah. I felt like church was very impactful for me. I met my first uh, guy who owned a Rolls Royce. Oh, wow. But I knew people who like cut tasu and like siwap, you know, the, the, the roast duck and the yeah, barbecue yeah. pork for a living too. And they probably and they, all saw each other as equals, right? It yeah, at least nice. for that Sunday. Uh, and cause that's a whole, Point. point of that system right yeah, yeah i guess um how, how do how do parents know what they have the capacity to guide or not because you know how it is like some parents they only just check the grades or some of them don't even check that right yeah i think i mean my parents were working all the time don't even speak english so they put me in a church system when i was like five six and i had these the church people teach me how to how to fold a napkin after i was eating how mm -hmm. to treat all the other kids like they would actually put me in detention so i think that's it was really valuable for sure, man. Um, like we said, this is just uh, the discussion that we had. It was addressing the two posts where people had uh, unsatisfactory outcomes in their 30s. And they were sort of like, I don't know, I guess some of them were kind of blaming their parents for it. Yeah. So um, I guess I'm pretty hopeful, though. I think a lot of people are going to be fixing a lot of the blind spots. Obviously, especially being Chinese, like I said, all Asians. But especially being Chinese, man, they were coming out of a really really old school time right uh, yeah but i will say to this guy if if this message ever gets out to the 30 year old who went to ivy league who has a good job and probably i'm assuming still has his health right it's not in a bad position to go doing a lot of things right now i mean right. he has he, all the things that he he's done now he can have like a rebirth maybe you know yes i'm sure the first 30 years of your life was not fun you did not feel accepted i get that but now you still have your health and you got money and education and connections at least on some level you got opportunities yeah, there. So right. shout out. I mean, you know. It's not a wrap. Your life ain't It's not over. a wrap. You can get coaching. You can get therapy. We got to normalize it. You can go to retreats. I mean, I do it. So I think it's benefited me a lot. For sure, man. Anyway, it was a dope discussion to have. I definitely think it's one that a lot of Chinese guys, to be honest, don't have often yeah. with each other. It's a kind of uncomfortable to talk uh, topic to talk about. And everybody feels it to a different extent. Some people mm -hmm. don't feel it at all. But anyway, it was a dope thing. Uh, Jack, check him out on Instagram. And uh, until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.